my little freaks. Yeah, it's been a long time. I'm not calling you the sweet sex of spirit anymore. It's because you're freaky if you're here. Takes one into one. Okay, I was not planning on making a video today. I've been wanting to make a new YouTube video for a while now, but I was feeling inspired. So I want to talk with you a little bit about why I haven't been taking on as many sissy subs as I have in the past. So years ago, when I was uh, more at the beginning stages, I was attracting, and I still do, I attract a lot of sissies. Um, and I can understand why, because I'm a sweet, soft, caring, not so judgmental woman. And I feminized my friends growing up. It's just it's my thing. Um, but I've gotten a lot more picky about the subs that I feminize and sissify. And I was reflecting on it today. This highlighted some key factors um, that really determine whether or not I'm taking someone on and am playing with them with cisification and feminization. I feel like this is going to be a controversial video, but okay, we're already in it. I've noticed that there are a lot of men that are into cisification and feminization for the wrong reasons. And be mad at me if you must, but it grosses me out. Like I just couldn't engage in that kind of play anymore because it roast me out it left me feeling icky and that's not what I'm here for I'm here to do what I love because it feels good I'm here to connect with the people that I want to the people that I enjoy because it feels good it's mutually beneficial in one way or another um and if I'm left feeling icky like it's not worth it for me don't care how much you pay me if I don't like what I'm doing it's not worth it so um, why doesn't it feel good? Like, why did it gross me out? Um, simply put, I think it has to do with the spirit that the sub holds and the reason that they're into feminization in the first place. Um, <sighs> most men that are engaging in this type of play are running from their true masculinity. They are running from their responsibility as a man. And I can also understand and empathize that maybe some men don't want to take responsibility for what it is to be a man because men have really messed up, <laughs> to put it nicely. Um, there is a lot to take responsibility for. And that can be not so easy. So they're running from that. Um, I also think it's just a lot of work to be a responsible, honorable, powerful man. And I don't look down on powerful men, by the way. Like, a lot of femdoms will say, like, oh, men shouldn't be powerful, only women, blah, 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 blah. No, no, thank you. This is a whole other video, but... The world needs powerful men, but noble, honorable, powerful men who are responsible for their energy, who are intentional with how they wield their power. And if that is in service to life, to goddess, to the divine feminine, that power has purpose. But like I said, that's another video. Um, sissies. Just because your dick is small and women aren't letting you them doesn't mean you get to call it a clit. The other side of that is instead of calling it a little clitty and trying to be something that you're not, for the SPH guys, if this is you, um, and if it's not, then just note it. Um, the SPH guys can use that little dick 
that useless little thing as a great motivator to be a better man, to step it up, to find ways to provide that don't require you to do things with that. There are other ways to please a woman. There are other ways to benefit life. And I've said this before, but if, if you are one that has a little thing, you should count it as a gift because you aren't going to ever be one of those men that thinks that your cock is a gift enough to life and you don't need to do much else because that's even worse. So, yeah, um, I guess that can basically get chalked up to not taking responsibility for being a man. Um, the reason that I was inspired to make this video after my call, though, is this sub I would see and I do see as more of an exception. This is somebody who in their masculine form does not shine as brightly as when their feminine side is embraced. One of the reasons that I do enjoy cisification and feminization is for the fact that it's opening up more of uh, who you are if you were a sub that is engaging in feminization, right? You are exploring more of your feminine force. You are exploring um, how you approach pushing uh, a norm or a boundary for yourself, right? What, how do you relate to that? Some people run head first. Some people are cautious. Some people face fear and anxiety. How do you smooth that out? Right? But how do you also know your limits? Like, when have you gone too far? Do you know your limits? Do you know yourself? And that's really the gift that that feminization has is like, it gives you the opportunity to explore yourself, period. So yes, I count that as a gift. That is a pro all the way with feminization. But just like any medicine in the wrong dose, it can be a poison. So if somebody um, were to say, explore their feminine side, get into sissification and feel how good it feels to be more themselves. But then instead of taking that and allowing it to enrich their life as a whole, they reject the rest of themselves and get sucked into that vortex. Poison! unhealthy, toxic, not good, not good. And that actually explains a lot of the dynamics that I have witnessed with uh, my sissy subs. And that actually makes me sad. Like I have felt time and time and time again, like I was not able to have a deep relationship with my sissies because they were living on a very shallow surface and they couldn't penetrate much deeper into themselves because that would mean facing the truth of who they are and they don't want that they want to play up here in satin and fishnet and so a lot of them is actually lost so if feminization is not achieving the result of somebody becoming more of who they really are then it's not an, a win in my book which is I can see now why it's something that I've, I've phased out a lot of and end up being very very picky um with whom I will indulge in that right um one of when I would feminize my friends growing up um when I enjoyed it the most was when they would resist like there would be this like this want to explore more of themselves like I could see it in their eyes and even in the way that they'd be like mm -mm, mm -mm, it would be like a you have to force me because I wouldn't be a man if I just gave in kind of a thing um but it was like a, an opportunity for us to just play in the space of who do you think you really are do you think that you are just this body are you only a man if you look a certain way, if you talk a certain way, if you dress a certain way, 
if you act a certain way? Who are you really? And does it matter so much what you appear to be on the surface? Or does it matter who and what you are on the inside? And that's another tool. Um, when I look at cisification and feminization, like one of the other big aspects that I see as a potential for growth is that it's the opportunity to play with basically it's like an ego exercise play with who you consider yourself to be like what is your actual identity and are you so firm and strict in that that you've actually boxed yourself in and have stifled your own expression because I will tell you if you were really a man, or if you were really a woman, you would still be just as much of a man, or just as much of a woman, or just as much of a whoever you are, no matter what you are wearing. Hmm. But if you're unwilling to maybe just let me braid your hair, or put some lipstick on you because your identity relies so heavily on what you look like, then obviously you are not very centered in who you are. So let this be an exercise in centering you, right? So there's that side of things too. I feel like this video is kind of all over the place, but um, essentially if it is not being done in a healthy way, feminization is actually robbing us of some people we really need in this world, in their power and in their strength. And yes, there's power and strength in submission. And most of the subs that I have now as lifestyle subs are powerful men who some many actually are alpha men alpha men right like they have a powerful role in this life their masculine energy is strong it's very tangible and it works in my favor and me being in their lives actually helps them to grow into more of the man that they are meant to be and so we work together in that way and some of these men yes they they do still play with feminization and I will play with that with them because I see that it's enhancing their quality of life it's not actually distracting them from the task at hand which is becoming more of who you really are maybe not even becoming remembering more of who you really are embracing and expressing more of your truth so that would actually summarize this video. Is feminization leading you to basically a fun house? This hall of mirrors that are all just illusion and you get lost in it and you forget who you are? Or is it leading you to strengthening your connection with yourself? and embracing the truth of who you are. If it's not that second one, then maybe you just kind of put a pause on that. Not saying you can't play with it, but you might want to just put a pause on it and come back when you're ready. And if you're watching this video and you're like, oh, that's why Creatrix wouldn't play with me. Well, if you're ready, you're really ready to take a different approach, you can reach out now. I will see you on the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment.